Siemens. Ingenuity for life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Siemens UK Symposium on 3WA Air Circuit Breakers. I hope you enjoyed that introductory video, which hopefully gave you a flavour of the new 3WA. So we're all here today to learn something about the digitalization aspects of the Siemens central portfolio, specifically air circuit breakers. At least that's what I hope anyway. But what I'm keen to stress here is that 3WA is not a completely unfounded product range. 3WA itself is a huge stride forward on the tried and tested 3WL air circuit breaker range. We'll dive into those improvements shortly, but first a little history lesson. Obviously, from this slide, you can see that Siemens has been manufacturing air circuit breakers for quite a long time. I personally have never seen an R913 or a 3WE for that matter, as I wasn't actually on this earth back then. So if you do spot any of these out in the field, do feel free to share them with me. You can see, though, that the 3WL has been around for a number of years, since 2001, in fact. In 2017, we released the frame size zero, 3WL10, or the mini ACB, if you will. We then added some upgrade functions to the 3WL1 in 2019. These upgrades were essentially the first step on the development of the new 3WA. The upgrades, which are now trialled and tested, have been kept. The original 3WL mechanical componentry, which is highly reliable, has also been kept. And now we've added some features to bring the Siemens ACB portfolio into the digital world. So what are those features? Well, today's symposium on Siemens electrical products is to focus on digitalization. So I won't dwell on the new frame sizes and the ease of retrofit. These are very mechanically focused. But for those panel builders in this session, a small snippet of information. You can upgrade or swap out 3WL for 3WA frame size for frame size with ease. Feel free to ask me more on that in the Q&A. What we're focusing on here, though, is first up the enhanced protective functions, the improved communication options, the digital ESET functionality, and the remotely upgradable trip units. So let's get into it. First up a brand new ETU, the ETU 600 range. Any other ETUs I hear you ask? Nope, just the ETU 600. You can see the face of the ETU 600 here, combining the old rotary switches with a new color display, which is operated by push buttons, not touchscreen. Dusty switch room climates and touchscreens don't tend to be a great mix, unlike wonderful PLC HMIs and nice clean factory settings. The rating plug, or option plug if you will, now contains the ETU functions of L, S, I and G alongside the current rating. You can see that the integrated voltage tap has also been included too, down there in the bottom left. But I want to bring your attention to the ESET, accessible via the rotary switches. If we want to set any of the trip functions on the breaker, we've got the local ability to do so via push buttons and rotary switches. But new with a 3WA, if you want to set those rotary switches to ESET, we can then set up the breaker via program interfaces, such as the PowerConfig app, which my good colleague Scott mentioned in today's earlier session. You've still got the option to tie in a COM unit to the device. This would allow parameterization via the desktop version of PowerConfig. In addition to this, though, you now have the ability to commission by Bluetooth connection on the new 3WA ACB. The Bluetooth functionality can be turned off should you have any customers that have any cyber security concerns over their plan. So we have one ETU, but behind the ETU, we have two separate processors. One covers the standard protective functions and another one covers the enhanced protective and energy monitoring functions. This brings a level of redundancy protection to the ETU, as it's not one processor handling everything. The application processor can be specified a part selection or upgraded at any time in the future to three different levels, PMF1, 
two and three. Level one is the standard energy monitoring spec, which doesn't bring any additional enhanced protective functions. Level two brings directional short time, reverse power, unbalanced loads, over and under voltage, power, frequency and direction of rotation. Level three brings all of those plus harmonic distortion. The protective processor brings the standard L, S, I and G functions, but now we can also offer DAS plus, another slide on that shortly. Whilst L, I, S and G high impedance is also a new function or high Z as it's shown there on the screen. This just gives you an idea of the levels of power monitoring and what they will include line for line and specifying levels PMF 1, 2 and 3. So level 1 being basic active energy plus current and voltage, moving up to level 2, adding in active power and frequency amongst other things. And then level 3 gives you all of the above plus the total harmonic distortion. OK, so DAS plus or DAS plus. No, it's not a German phrase. It stands for dynamic arc century. What exactly is it? It's a concept that's been around for a long time in UL applications for switchboards. Put my teeth back in. It's for the protection of commissioning and service engineers working on the panel. Essentially, it turns the ACB down to ensure better protection from potential arc faults during work in close proximity to the switchboard. As you can see here, it can be set via external signal over comms or using the keys and buttons on the front of the ETU. It essentially reduces I function and G function to a minimum to ensure that safety. But what about the rest of those enhanced protective functions we referred to earlier? Well, one was directional short time protection. This function is used when you have multiple supply sources on a panel, i.e. multiple generators all at the same rating. If a fault occurs, you run the risk of a supply becoming a load potentially. So DST or directional short time works by setting short circuit protection in the reverse direction to operate faster than the short circuit protection in the conventional direction. Reverse power is a similar function to that performed by a G59 relay, but does not replace the G59, I must state that. which G59s are generally a requirement for incoming devices from, straight from the DNOs in the UK, as some of you uh, may be familiar with. If a fault occurs in a generator supply system due to frequency variation, for example, there's a chance of power flowing in the wrong direction back into the generator, which could then turn said generator potentially into a motor. Reverse power function stops this back feed into the generator. So this is a new feature to 3WA. You will have seen ground fault functions before on 3WL, no doubt, residual, direct and dual, as you can see on the screen. However, the new high Z or high impedance function is for restricted earth fault. It's essentially RCD protection. It's used for those high impedance, low current applications. So it adds another dimension to the ground fault protective functions on offer from the Siemens ACB. So to recap, earlier on, we covered the two microprocessors inside the ETU 600. We've also covered the various enhanced protection functions, also all the basic protection functions are now integral to the ACB. However, what if you order a new 3WA and forget to include a function or a power monitoring level is under spec, you spec level one and you need level two or three? Well, you may have spotted a nugget of information on the earlier slides, but this is where 3WA comes into its own. If something is forgotten when procuring the device or you simply wish to upgrade the functionality in the future, this can now be completed via a simple firmware update using a soft key. The simple process is as seen here. Each function within the breaker will be given a part number. The part number can then be ordered via your industry mail account. This then links into the automation license manager. Those familiar with Siemens TIA will be very familiar with this, I imagine. 
You then add these functions into your 3WA ACB via the Power Config software. The Power Config software is available free of charge, and with the new 3WA, I highly recommend downloading it when you get the chance. Why have we done it this way? Well, if you took every single possible combination of part number for 3WA, there would be quite a few numbers to remember. You've got 30 basic designs of the breaker, then you've got 5,000 feature sets. So that ends up in a heck of a lot of personalized custom options. I'm sure you'll agree that post sales upgradability via power config or some other form of communication is a great step forward from 3WL. If we want to set up any of our trip settings or upload any new software keys on site, how do we connect our power config software to the breaker? Well, we can use any of the formats seen here, USB-C, cubicle bus converted to Modbus TCP, Wi-Fi or Profinet, and finally Bluetooth as well. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions will allow the use of the new Power Config app available on Apple iOS and Android, whilst the 3WA has also been integrated into the TIA portal prior to its launch. On that note, though, let's take a look at this Power Config tool that I keep mentioning quite a lot. First up, where can we find it? Well, let's just click on this short video here. So just like any other iOS app, simply open up the App Store, type in Power Config, give that a search. See, we've got the Centron Power Config out there. Get that downloaded and installed onto your device. This may take a minute. Once installed, simply open that up. You'll be met with an introduction page the first time using the app. So the introduction pages will just highlight some of the features. So for example, you can search for devices, add those devices in, import some projects, share some projects, check the parameters of specific Centron devices. Obviously you see 3VA and 3WL there. 3WA will be added after the February launch. And you can also communicate with the testing devices via Bluetooth interface as well. But if we hit start, that's just going to check our Bluetooth connections are active on our mobile. And then away we go. OK, so once we've added in the devices in question and created our project, what can we use the app for? We can check the state of the selected devices, the, the devices we've added in. We can cycle through the tab showing the energy or the active power, etc. You can go into detail on each one of these variables. For example, you could split down per phase there, as you'll see on the uh, fourth image along. We've then got the messages tab. This will show the device's history per day and show the events as well. And finally, we've got the info tab for pulling serial numbers or IP addresses of specific pack meters. The Power Config app gives a fantastic quick overview of a Centron device without having to pull out your laptop and interrogate the device in detail. But what if we want more than just an overview? What if we do want those details and we want to go down into the nitty gritty of the device? In that case, we install the full version of Power Config onto our client or our laptop. Now, I can't quite take you through a 3WA setup right now on the Power Config app, as we're currently preparing for the product launch, as you would expect, so it's not quite in there. But here's a short video showing the setup of a PAC2200 energy meter in the meantime. The principles are still the same. Let's have a watch.
So hopefully now you can see the direction that the Siemens LV portfolio is moving in. But I wouldn't be a Siemens employee if I didn't mention Mindsphere. Over a standard network, in this network topology example, a Modbus TCP protocol network, we can now integrate the portfolio of ACB, MCCB and PacMeter by one route into Mindsphere. We can use the new PowerCenter 3000 to act as the gateway to the IoT, as my good colleague Scott demonstrated in today's earlier session. Due to this connectivity for LV devices now being possible, the support software of PowerConfig and the monitoring software of Power Manager can give you various visualization options and data analysis at your fingertips. So you can see what's happening with your switch gear remotely via web browser if you wish, or cloud-based applications. Do keep an eye on the potential Mindsphere apps that will be coming your way very shortly. To finish off though, back on 3WA, which is why we're here, should you need any technical support, manuals, data sheets, or testing certification, then just like the rest of the Centron portfolio, simply scan the QR code on the front of the breaker, and this will link you through to the SIOS portal, the Siemens Industry Online Support Portal. Or feel free to download the SIOS app too. Quick personal note from me here, please do try the frequently asked questions section on SIOS. It's populated often as the FAQs are constantly growing as you would expect, and it's highly likely you'll find the answers to those awkward inquiries and awkward application questions that you have on site in there. And that's it. That is the new 3WA air circuit breaker, along with a quick outline of the power config software. I hope that quick 20 minute session has given you a taste of what's to come with 3WA. But before I leave you, when does 3WA launch? Well, I may have actually let it slip in my power config video earlier on if you were paying attention. But to reiterate, 3WA will launch in the UK in February 2021. So please keep an eye on the Siemens social media channels as we approach the end of this month. If you're eager to get ahead of the launch with any key customers, feel free to drop me a line and I'll do my best to support you. Thanks very much for listening and I'll catch you later on at the Q&A.